Welcome back to the Lenses Photography Podcast. I am your host, Oliver Weiniger. In this episode, we will be talking with Andy Metcalf about portrait photography. Roll intro music. portrait photography (sighs) portrait photography uh, the capture of light uh, regarding subjects of person or animal (laughs) says webster's dictionary (laughs) yeah no i think that's a, a pretty good basic definition just any well animals i guess that's more wildlife photography but you can do like a portrait of your dog or whatever but people um, and pets yeah but portrait photography is just anything where you have opposed human i guess you could say opposed person um a posed subject a posed subject yeah because there's also candid photography which is kind of more taking pictures of the person just kind of of people not posing yeah not posing kind of just doing what they're doing and yeah people do portrait photography so it looks like candid stuff Mm -hmm. but really it's they're still posed it's like a lot of like lifestyle stuff for like product stuff which i guess that's more commercial photography but they'll kind of do that they'll like pose them in a candid position yeah i i actually do a little bit of that with with my portrait photography i try and make them look like they naturally naturally yeah like at weddings and stuff like that, like you get a lot of candid stuff and whatnot. Yeah, when you're just you, when you're wandering around, just snapping pictures of people across the room. Yeah, in a non creepy manner. Yeah, it's a <laughs> wedding, so people are used to it. For sure. So let's kind of get into that. What are kind of like the different types of portrait photography that there is? Well, the probably the the biggest main category is is like single person photography. Yeah. And then there's, you know, there's a lot of subcategories that go with that. Yeah. There's Um, like, you have like your typical like senior and graduation portraits that you see a lot. Bridals. Yeah. Which, which I feel like bridals, same with like maternity shots. Usually like you'll do both. You'll have couple pictures at the same time, but then you'll get just the bride or. Yeah. Or if it's like maternity shoots, you'll just get the woman. Um, for sure well and and even even when i do uh when i've done bridles if the groom is there i'm i'm gonna have pictures of the bride pictures of them together pictures of the groom yeah because there can you know they're even though it's mostly about her it's you know it's still good to have pictures of him and yeah no for uh, sure and then what else is and probably a really popular one is just like model shoots where it's it's someone that wants to be a model or you're like, you're hiring a model out and sure. I guess that could be for several reasons. If you're wanting to do more like fashion photography or like what we were saying, like more commercial stuff, or if you just want pretty photos of a person. Sure. Sure. Um, and then, uh, fine art, I guess. Yeah. There was another one I was thinking of. Um, Oh, um, like professional headshots yeah, that people true. will use for their LinkedIn profile or the executives of the board will have their pictures yeah. hanging that, on that's the at, wall. That's at my job. That's I did like headshots every once a month for all the employees, like all the new employees that come. So I just have my backdrop and they just come in. It's just very bland. And yeah, I'll do like before and after pictures, like portraits there too. And a lot of that is pretty much just like headshots and like different angles and stuff like that too. So pretty, very simple and just even lighting and stuff like that. I just have like a couple flashes hanging from the ceiling and I want. Okay, well, right, right. without getting too distracted, then the other types of portrait photography, then we talked about single person, then we have like couples um, and that could be engagements or just general couple pictures. Um, sure kind of wedding style yeah well and and even just you know best friends so i yeah i did a shoot with my niece and her best friend that were just you know they spent a lot of time together and hung out and they thought it'd be fun to go to do a photo shoot and we did a photo shoot of them together and and they had a ton of fun and you know 
they had some great pictures that they both really love and it was just kind of just for fun. Yeah. Yeah. And there's for, for sure a decent amount of that. And then probably my least favorite family, family. photos <laughs> <laughs> pays. They pay really well. Um, and I guess they're not too bad when everyone's older. It's just when there's kids and stuff like that. That just, it makes me want to pull my hair out. Dealing with kids can be a difficult, a difficult piece of, of family photography. And there's certainly tricks to the trade and everybody has their own, that sort of thing. I, I have a tendency when I'm doing family portraits, you know, when there's, usually when there's multiple families because there's mom and dad and all of their kids, but then their kids, some of their kids are married and have kids. And then you've got the little toddlers running around. And so what I try and do is get the whole family together because especially if grandpa is the one who hired me, I want a picture of him and his posterity. And if you can get the kids before they get bored, so about because that's the problem. You, you, yeah, sometimes you get 30 seconds. But if you can if you can get that picture where you're dealing with everyone and if you can get everyone else to cooperate and do the things that you ask them to do and not worry about their kids so much and let me worry about them, then you can get some shots of everyone looking at you and sometimes you have to chop some heads. Yeah, in family pictures, <laughs> there's always tons of here face and there swaps. with yeah face swaps and and those sort of things i've done my fair share of that yeah i'm sure but then you can break into smaller groups and then these kids can go and play and then you only have to deal with this family and their kid yeah and then you can move to the next family group and you just need that little window of where that kid behaves um I, and i'll usually try and get like an assistant or someone to help me out if it's a family show and like, and I even sure, have a sure. problem like paying them a decent amount just because it's so stressful. So I'll bring a an assistant just to calm myself. So it's not so much work for me and then someone to help get the kids attention and stuff like that. And I'm more of a quiet, like I'm not a super social person. So family photos and couple couples photos I can handle, but more than that is about my limit. And that's yeah. when I'm kind of, very not super uncomfortable but it's just kind of my limit of social being social and whatnot sure sure if i know that i'm going to have lots of children there i will do the same thing a lot of times if possible i'll bring my wife because she's very good at that stuff girls i they're and, just yeah and the girls are definitely better at it than the guys are i guess it depends but for the most part not being sexist or anything Girls just handle, I think, weddings and portraits and stuff like that just easier. Well, I think women are better generally at social situations. Yeah. And I think, I think, and again, I'm not trying to be like sub subjective at all, but I think most people are more comfortable around a female too, a female photographer than a male. Yeah, that's certainly the case. There's a, a photographer that lives right around the corner from my old house and she pretty well soaked up all of the business from the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, you know, all the family portraits and the little kids pictures and all the, all of the, I want to say the cutesy stuff because she's better than I am at doing the cutesy stuff because she's better at being cutesy. And sometimes that's more important than actually your photography skill. Well, in the sure. long run, it may and, not be. And she's but... really good. She's a really good photographer. I'm not, I don't want to disparage anything yeah. that, that she does because she is very good, but she also has better interpersonal skills, Yeah, which I think is a lot of what has allowed her to to be able to capture that group of business. And I don't want to say that she took it from me because it was never really mine, but I was like the guy in the neighborhood who's the photographer. And then she took up photography and very quickly was able to capture that, you know, that business because her of her personality and, yeah. and the way she does things and she absolutely earned it and she's good at it. And I don't, 
have a problem with that at all, except that I wish I was as good at it as she is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as, you know, as far as handling the kids and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. And then that kind of, I guess there's other types of group photography and like wedding photography that I don't really want to get into. Yeah. Um, this that's episode. Its own, that's um, its own episode. Yeah. And there's other like big groups, like again, like business places or if you're doing big group shots. Sure. And stuff like that. And, and there's actually some, um, like on Instagram, I've seen there's like some photographers that do businesses and they'll like plan it out like really well. And like, it'll be almost like a fine art, like model shoot that it looks like, but it's just like uh, the photographer, like capturing the whole business together. And they, it looks, it looks pretty nice. I'm trying to remember one of the photographer's like the names, whole, like the business family, so to speak. Yeah. But it's not, well, it, it looks different than just like family photos. It more looks like a kind of like a fine art model like they're in the business place you know and like everyone kind of has their like pose very specifically and whatnot but hmm. it's like very different i'll have to show you show you later um i'll link one of the the instagram accounts that i was thinking about i can't remember the photographer's name but he does like a really good job of kind of doing very unique kind of group pictures that you wouldn't normally see of kind of like businesses and stuff like that and he were he lives here in Utah. He did like the the housewives of Salt Lake and he's done a bunch of other things and whatnot. But his hmm. his stuff's really good though. That's cool. I've done a few groups. Like it was the one that comes to my mind is that someone had done a like an Iron Man Spartan sort oh, of yeah. event. And and at the end, everyone who had completed the course, they had gathered together and I did you know, a big group photo of everyone who had, you know, completed the challenge. And so there was a group photo with that, but that was really more part of an event than anything else. Yeah. And there's also like, like what you're saying too, there's, I feel like you'll get like lots of like friend groups and stuff like that. that will want to do photos together and stuff too. It's like, for sure. Well, like school dances, you yeah. have, you know, you're going to have different groups that are are going to be a lot like the family stuff where you're going to have the couples together and the, all the guys together and all the girls together. And Yeah. So Chad Kirkland, that's a photographer I was thinking of. I'll link his account here, but he does really, really good stuff. He does have like a very unique way of doing it and he's really good at lighting and stuff like that. That's and, great. That's really cool. Um, but he has like a ton of, a ton of stuff. I love it. Yeah. That's super neat. That's really that's really unique. I haven't seen anything like that before, I don't think. Yeah, it's for sure a whole new take on, on group photo. So as we're kind of talking about these specific types of portraits, what what gear do you use? Um, and I guess we can maybe kind of go back through the list specifically. So I assume we, we use the same cameras for the most part. If we're most part, we use digital. I think we'll do film here and there, but I don't think we really need to focus too much on that but like if you're just doing single person portraits like what what lens do you usually use if i'm doing single person i am almost always using my 85 millimeter uh you know 1.2 l series from canon mirrorless mount lens it is it's so pretty it is so sharp uh the focus is so fast and you know, of course, most of the focus has to do with the camera, but uh, the compression is great. The colors are fabulous. It's just such a pretty lens. It's still probably my favorite lens because of what I can do and what I can create with with that one lens that doesn't zoom. I can do some really neat stuff. And then occasionally I'll I'll take that off and put the 50 millimeter on if I want something a little wider. Uh, if I want to capture more than, you know, than the headshot or, you know, the three quarter bust shot, if I want to get back a little bit further than, than the 50 millimeter, but that's really about it is those two lenses. Yeah. That's I'm about the same way, or at least I was, I would do a lot with my, I just have the, an 85 one eight and then a 55 one eight. So they're not a one, two, of course, but that's what I'd usually use for single person portraits. And then Lately, every time I do it, I've just been using my 24 to 70, which I just sold and now I have the 35 to 150, but I would just use the 24 to 70 and I'd actually, I'd use that for everything. I'd use that for couples, 
and family as well, just because it's a lot easier and more versatile. And it's just, I can zoom fast and kind of change up stuff really fast. And that way, like if I'm doing a 45 minute session, I can get kind of my range of photos without changing lenses. For sure. Yeah. If, and you know, the 50 and the 85 are great for single person, but if, if there are two people or more, I'm, I'm using the 24 to 70. And then at a certain point and, and in certain situations, I'll need to be even wider than that. And then I have the 50 to 35, but that's same here. I've used that lens maybe three times because yeah. it's a massive group in an area where I can't back up very far. Yeah, because usually you don't want to use a, a wide angle for even groups just because of the distortion. Unless, yeah, definitely. Unless you really have to. Yeah, and that's if, I, if I'm doing more of like model stuff or like setting up a situation, which even still I'll use a, my 24 to 70 a lot, but more of those times I'll use like my 85 or 55 where I'm like, it's more of a planned shot, you know, and I have everything specific definitely but that's what i'll use with lenses i uh, i only have the one camera body the r5 and i can do everything i need to do and more with that camera there's just no reason for me to have another one yeah that's me i just i use my r4 again unless i'm using film or whatever but i use that for everything um what about lighting what do you usually do do you stick with natural lighting or do you use strobes Again, that depends. Uh, If I'm doing group shots, I really like natural light. I like doing them outdoors just because there's a little bit of, there's more room to spread out and you don't feel like you're, you know, kind of all cramped in this little, little room, which will test everyone's patience very quickly. Yeah. Um, And, you know, and if I'm outside, the natural light is, is the answer when possible. Um, If I don't have that as an option, then I I'll use strobes and, and I've used strobes outside as the sun setting and I'm, I'm losing light. And, you know, there's a, a specific shoot that I'm thinking of where we did family portraits at the cemetery and the sun was setting and we were running out of time and, and I needed more light. And so I pulled the strobes out. I have a set of strobes that use batteries which is the awesomest thing if you don't if you don't have those if you use strobes and you don't have battery powered strobes get battery powered strobes <laughs> they're like 10 times more expensive but yeah they don't have to be there are less expensive versions i love for pro the good photo for stuff. the good ones sure and uh, you know yeah I pro just, photo stuff for i sure love 10 pro times photo strobes time. but at 1700 bucks a piece i'll pick something else yeah i get like a uh, i have I just have one of them, but Flashpoint, which is just Adorama's rebranding of Godox, and those are really nice. I right, like and the lot. Godox ones are nice too. They're a little bit more expensive, but yeah, they're not. They're still not too bad. They're I think is for the quality. I think it's that's as cheap as you'll find for. Yeah, I have a know. set from ProMaster, which is a, a house brand, you know, an an in store generic, so to speak, and I really like them, but they've recently been discontinued so really i didn't know that it's on to something else if i need more i might buy the last couple that my store has and, <laughs> yeah and then have them because they'll they'll work just fine but after a certain amount of time you know the if the batteries need to be replaced and they're not supporting them anymore then the whole thing is kind of in the can yeah which is frustrating but that's not much you can do. how gear goes yeah unfortunately i have a bunch of brawn color flashes super old ones like 30 year old ones that were my grandpa's i have like 15 of them which will be like nice for studio stuff because like you have to keep them plugged in and stuff and whatnot but i have it's just like a ton of light though um nice are those the ones that that like you plug a box into the wall and then you plug all the lights into that and the power comes from that box And, and even even a lot of like the pro photo lights are still like that and stuff like that just depending on yeah on what they are but yeah that that's what it what it is though nice thing is so brawn color still makes strobes and they're probably some of the most expensive ones they're i don't even know the price they're just they're ridiculously expensive but you can still buy the big boxes that they put that the lights plug into and so i could get a newer one 
that's portable and plug the old lights into. Not that I would do that, but it's kind of cool to have the option. Sure, sure. It's like $10,000 for the box, but... So Zoinks! Maybe you could probably find an older one for cheaper. But yeah, so I guess I, I usually try and use strobe for the most part. If it's like, again, if it was like a senior picture or something like that, or more of like a fast-paced shoot, I will probably just use a reflector usually, and that's kind of usually how it goes. And then if not, I will try and use a strobe and just mix that with like the natural lighting. So it's just kind of filling in like the shadows and stuff like that. And especially if it's like a really sunny day and it's like, yeah, if you're getting shadows on the face or whatever, then I'll use a strobe. Yeah. Well, and I did a shoot that was out in the middle of the desert on the dry lake bed south of Las Vegas. If you've ever been out there, it was a sunny day, not a cloud in the sky. It was hot and, and bright. And the only real option that I had was a reflector, but I was able to pose the models in a way that the sun wasn't on their face, but I could reflect the sun back to them somewhat softer, obviously. Yeah. But was able to get some really, really beautiful results where they were in the shadow of themselves, but then still kind of well lit. lit. Yeah, because because I had that sun reflecting. Yeah, the, the, I, I like using reflectors a lot, too, because they're easier, still a lot faster, but you can still get good results like that, too. And they have like the sure. I've just like, again, with ProMaster, I have one of the ProMaster, the five in one ones. So you have like a black side in case you want to like absorb some light or flag off some light. And then you have a white and then you have like a see through white and then you have a silver and a gold. And so. Yeah, you have a ton of options just right there, and they have a bunch of different sizes and stuff too. And so you can find those on like Alan's camera dot net. They have yeah. a bunch of those, or you can just find those on like B and H or Amazon for pretty cheap forty. Yeah, or 30 like bucks or something. everybody makes them. Yeah, um, I've seen them from Polaroid. In fact, I think one of the ones that I have is branded from Polaroid. Yeah, and they, um, they work just fine. It's not. Yeah, like they're work. all kind of the same. Yeah pick a good size. The hard part for me with reflectors is oftentimes you need an assistant. Yeah. And that, that's usually most, of the but not just assistant. somebody, you need somebody who, who kind of understands what they're doing. So you can say, you've got to be able to direct them and they know how to translate your direction into right. actions. Like if you want them to condense the light and focus on face, Joe Schmo isn't going to know what that means. Well, and I'll usually have a Joe Schmo, whether it's my wife or a friend or something like that. And I'll, I'll still be paying them. And I will literally, I'll hold the reflector exactly how I want it to see how I want the light. And then I tell them, okay, hold this exactly like this and don't move a step. And then I'll go take a picture. Take and so if you move. have someone yeah. that knows what they're doing a little bit more, then you'll be able to, kind of direct them a bit easier and stuff like that too. And they they are getting kind of some experience and they can see how you work and stuff like that, especially if sure, it's like sure. an aspiring photographer. So I think that's kind of the best idea. No, and that's, that's absolutely true. I just, my experience has been that it's easier for me to set up a strobe with a, you know, with a light modifier of some sort because I, I kind of already know what it's going to do. And so I can put it where I want and point it where yeah. I want. And I'm usually really dang close, you know, at getting what I want because I know, I know what it's going to do. And, and a lot of that just comes from having done it for a long time. Yeah. But I know what it's going to do and I can take that shot. And then if I have to make a minor adjustment, I can do that and take another shot and then I'm done and I don't have to, I don't have to hire somebody else or, or I don't always have the option to, yeah, that's to grab somebody or, or hire someone, if, you know, if whoever I would typically use isn't available, then, you know, then for me, I can just grab the strobe and yeah. And set it up, set it up myself. Yeah. Um, what else, what other gear do you use? I guess, you know, all the basic stuff, but I'm trying to think if there's anything else other than strobes, reflectors, good lenses that have a shallow depth that you can get shallow depth of field with. Yeah. Um, I mean, the only other thing I can think of is, is going to be more props. Yeah. You know, for, 
for whoever it is for pro posing purposes. Yeah. You know, whether it's a stool or a chair or a, a certain outfit or something like that, I guess, or whatever. Yeah. Well, or, or some, some accessory that goes along with what they're, you know, their thing, you know, whether it's a, a football or a basketball or a trumpet or a hockey helmet or something like that. But that's really more about what they're using than they being the model. Yeah. Than what I'm using as a photographer. Yeah. And I guess it kind of depends. Like if you're in a studio, you'll for sure have a lot more of that stuff and a lot more extra gear and stuff. Cause you'll, you'll probably be, well, of course you'll be using more strobes. Like usually I have, I'm doing in a studio. Sometimes it'll just be one, but usually it's at least two strobes I'm using and like a reflector or like a bounce board or something. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you'll have like more props and kind of be more worried about that. And then I'll even have my computer almost always if I'm a, in a studio with my capture cord, capturing it straight to my laptop. Yeah. Um, the other thing is a uh, backdrop, which is yeah typically studio, studio based stuff. Not always, but. But I'll have, you know, whether it's cloth or the seamless paper, which I really like using. Yeah, I don't love cloth. I feel like it's just always wrinkly. And <laughs> even the non-wrinkle ones are always wrinkly. And you need to, like, steam them, which I just don't own a steamer. So that's about how yeah. that goes. Well, and I actually went and bought a little steamer to use with my wrinkle-resistant backdrops. Because resistant is the keyword. Oh, that's what it is. But... I still need some steam to, to kind of play it out. And then you get one use out of it and it's dirty. You got to throw in the wash. That's what I like about paper. And is because even like the paper, like it lasts quite a long time. And then once that part's dirty, you can cut you it off, cut and, it off and pull some more. Yeah. Like it's I, just easier. It's more convenient. And they last forever too. They last so long and you can draw on it. You can do whatever. And, that way, if you're making a mess or if you're doing like a food item or whatever, like it's not a big deal you for sure worry about ruining it because it's paper. Well, and, you know, you mentioned drawing on it. You can have, you know, you're going to have paint on it. I've had I actually had someone paint a Halloween scene for me. It was actually on on a canvas, not on not on paper, but paper would have worked way better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah than this canvas and you know and i still have it but the canvas is you know it's wrinkled and it's got creases in it and and i can't steam it or i'm gonna ruin the a lot of people do that they'll make like custom backdrops that they'll paint on and stuff like that and some look yeah. pretty cool well and but... and you can make some pretty hefty money uh making those i've seen i've seen custom painted backdrops sell for thousands of dollars yeah, they're pricey for sure which is you know if you can paint and you can sell them then good for you yeah well and it's like if like you want something specific or something like that and especially if it's like a, a paid shoot that you're doing for it, it's probably worth it and it's something you can probably reuse for the most part yeah well and that's like like this one in particular that i had someone paint uh i had the benefit that it was for a church and she was a member of that church and loves to do that sort of thing and so she painted this backdrop for me and you know and it was a ton of fun i i painted some of it and she went in and fixed it well fixed it yeah <laughs> she went in and fixed um she saw what i was trying to do and made it look good that's my official stance yeah on that so so how long have you been doing portrait photography for oh boy I have been doing portraits for probably 12 or 13 years. Oh, wow. The first couple of years of that was really just, you know, for for friends, you know, just, oh, hey, you do photography. Will you take my pictures? And it wasn't my, it wasn't my job choice. I was actually working at the post office at the time. But it was something that I enjoyed doing. And so they'd, you know, hit me up and I'd do their pictures for them because it was fun or whatever. But then after that job, as I kind of tinkered with different stuff, um, there's a big long story behind that, but photography was one of those things. And I started uh, doing portraits, single person portraits, doing professional headshots, 
And then some of those people actually would hire me to do their family portraits. And then there's a couple of those people who I still do family portraits for every year for the last 10 years, not the last, this last year because of COVID, I think, but hopefully they'll call me next year and not be upset that the prices went up. (laughs) (laughs) I've just always done it for them for less money, but I'm not really willing to do that anymore. Yeah. Well, like it is your job and stuff like that. So I don't, that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves is people are like, Oh, you're a photographer. So you can do it for free or whatever. And it's like, when you tell someone that normally you charge, you know, a few hundred bucks or 500 bucks for a thing. And it's like, it's even though like it's, they think it doesn't cost you any money. It's like still, it's a ton of time. And especially when you're working and doing other things like that. And you know, it's thousands and thousands of dollars you spent on the gear and stuff like that too. It's oh, yeah. like you got to well, get and, a way to get the money back. And so. years and years of learning or formal education, which costs money. If, if I have a master's degree in photography, that should be worth as much as a master's degree in engineering. I mean, not really, but, but kind of, you know, it's my expertise. And if you want to hire me for my expertise, then you can pay me for my experience. And, you know, even though the final product is, is a print that you can do at a camera shop for, you know, or at a print shop for 30 or $40, there's a whole lot more that goes into it than, than $40. Yeah, that's for sure. What do you currently do? Like, what type of portraits do you currently do? <laughs> Lately, um, and and I think in part because of COVID, I haven't really done much of anything. I've done some uh, some professional headshots. Um, I did a, a corporate headshot for a guy, uh, hoping to get in to do his whole company, and then. Uh, he paid me for him. He seemed happy, but then I never heard anything back. Hmm. Uh, it happens. Yeah. And, and I'm not like getting it bent out of shape about it. And then I've done a couple of uh, social media headshots lately. Yeah. But that's about it. Yeah. It's been really slow. Yeah. Yeah. Me, me too as well. So I, when I started out, let's see, I did maybe a few portrait sessions in high school. I remember one of my friends I go to the gym with a few times a week still, I did his portraits, his senior pictures, and he's like a year older than me, a year and a half older than me, when we were in high school, and I charged him like 75 bucks for it. And just the other day, I like we were talking about it, and I was like, I am sorry I charged you that much for it. Not like $75 is extremely cheap, but just those photos were extremely bad, though. They were, <laughs> I used my wide angle 10 to 18 millimeter lens for them, and they're they're really bad. And then I did a couple other sessions and I think they turned out okay in high school. And then after high school, I started getting a lot more into it. And especially as I kind of got better with lighting, I started doing a lot more single portraits mainly of just a single person and then a couple portraits and some families here and there. I would kind of try and stay away from those. Um, And then I kind of just really stopped liking i'm just again i'm not a huge people person so i don't love doing it like it's i'm fine doing it and it's like you can get some decent money but i just started doing more commercial stuff that i enjoyed a lot more so i kind of steered that way and now i'm in my job where i do portraits every single day but really basic portraits but and then i do commercial stuff too but i don't do i hardly do any like i don't i'm not actively searching for people to do portraits for it's just if someone contacts me or whatever and that's kind of the only ones i'll do and most of the other time i try and shy away from them actually right now just because i am busy and have a full-time job and my other time i'd rather spend on doing other stuff or other photography jobs or whatever that i prefer no i'm the same way i'm not out looking for work trying to generate yeah i get uh, any additional business yeah you know i'm happy with the workload that i have you know, with what I do between the store that I work for and then taking care of my family and, and those sort of things. I've been doing more education stuff. Yeah. Like what we talked about teaching and stuff. Um, so not a lot of portrait stuff really. But. Yeah. But what I do like though, and what I actually want to do more of is just more like fine art, like very posed portraits like kind of more of like a scene type thing and I, i've done a few things here and there like that but that's kind of 
more fun for me where I can have like a friend or like a model or whatever doing something. And it's really like I'm in charge of everything. So it's not like a shot that someone else wants to get. So I wouldn't be, you know, making money on it, but it would just be more of a for fun thing or for a certain project or something like that. For sure. Like with portfolio padding. Yeah, portfolio. And that's a lot of what I'll do is I'll do like lifestyle stuff at my current job. So it'll be them holding a product or whatever or using a product and stuff. And so they're kind of posed with the product, which is kind of a portrait slash product photography kind of a mix. Yeah. Uh, which I, I prefer much more because, again, I'm I'm the one kind of in, in charge more and it's not so much about what the model wants, but what the company needs or whatever. And I kind of have the creative freedom to decide that. Sure, sure. Well, and that's cool that, that the company gives you not necessarily carte blanche, but but gives you the freedom to say, hey, create something. I trust you to. Yeah. And, and they'll kind of give me like a theme or a certain product to highlight and then I can kind of decide from there. Sure, sure. Uh, but you can decide how exactly you want to go about yeah. that. That's really cool. Yeah, like tomorrow at my work, we're actually doing some more like Christmassy themed one for December and stuff like that. And so, oh yeah. So, <laughs> let me ask you, Oliver what what do you like about portrait photography? What do I like? That is a <laughs> tricky question. <laughs> I do like it. I don't hate it. Is again, it's just like any type of photography. It's like an art, you know, where you're trying to make pretty pictures and stuff like that too. And I and I do really enjoy when you send someone their photos and they're happy about it and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But I do get very stressed. And again, I'm just not outspoken. I'm not very social. I'm I'm not an extrovert at all. And so I I don't love doing portraits and stuff like that. So before the shoots, I get like stressed out about it and. During the shoots, I'm fine. Like I'm fine, and I can handle it. But it's just, it's not not my cup of tea. Sure. And so, but it's it is it is still photography. So I still do enjoy. It. I don't hate it. But it's just. Do you find it hard to direct other people? Like turn your head this way. At the beginning, that sort of yes, stuff. that was very difficult for me. I was like, "What the heck am I doing?" And still, sometimes, like if especially if it's a longer shoot too, or the customer will pick like a bigger package of images. It's like I run out of ideas because I don't do enough portraits right now where I, you know, am keeping up on it. So I kind of run through my ideas after about, you know, the 45 minute hour mark or whatever. And then after that, I'm like, okay, what do I, what do I do now? Uh, But that is for sure one of my least favorite. And I kind of, again, now I, with single person and, and um couples i can do it fine again up to that like 45 minute mark ish after that it's i'm just kind of guessing families and stuff like that i just i don't even know i (laughs) i I try and do what looks good and it's again that's more of a nightmare what about you what do you think i i struggled with the same thing um i i did have the advantage I've, i've gone to a couple of workshops with the great Sal Sincata. He's a phenomenal photographer. He does amazing work. And I really admire him and his energy and what he does. And he's just the nicest guy in the world. But I went to these workshops and he was giving us instruction about giving models instruction. And and he really helped us to understand that that what they need, even though these are professional models that do this for a living, they need you to tell them what you want so that you can create the art yeah. that you are trying to create. And it really, that really opened up my mind to not just with models that are hired for whatever shoot you're doing, but with you know, mom and dad and the siblings and yeah, they all don't, of those people. For the most part, they don't know what they want. And well, and they really don't. And they don't know what to do because they're just standing there going, you know, derp de dir whatever. And so you really have to give direction and, you know, and say, you know, Jim, do this. And, and that's what that part is what's really hard for me because I'm really terrible with remembering people's names. Oh, yeah. And I blame my brain injury. But... 
I will call people, you know, by the color of their shirt or something, which is really hard here in Utah when all the guys are wearing a white shirt and a blue suit and a blue tie. Um, hey, hey, hey Baldy <laughs> over there, yeah. move to your right um, six inches. Yeah. And so, you know, but trying to give direction to those people and get them to do something so that they are posed in their best way, but then also in a way to make it look natural and, you know, and have a more candid look about them, even though it's a clearly posed situation. And so I, I, I still struggle with large groups and directing large groups that I think would be easier if I could be introduced to everybody and then know their name and call them by name. Yeah. I always forget their names. That's the problem though. As they tell me their name three minutes later, I'm like, Oh, Oh, two seconds. And (laughs) it's gone. Like they'll tell me. And it was like, I wasn't even listening and I am. And I try really hard. It's just, it's hard, especially Utah with the huge families and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I have friends whose fathers had this great idea to give all of their daughters first names that all started with the same letter. Oh yeah. There's a lot of those. And, and like I could just, I could guess and maybe get four of them, (laughs) but but that actually makes it harder for me than as opposed to, as opposed to being easier. Um, And so I, so I struggle with that. Yeah. But what what I'll do for posing sometimes, or what I used to do, is I'd look at Pinterest and I'd make a board for like, if it was a female, I would do like single females or males, I do males, I have like a separate board or like couples or whatever. And then I kind of, I go through those, I can kind of look at them, you know, a few days before or whatever. And then like, on the way to the shoot, I'd be like scrolling through or, or whatever, right before the shoot, before I go, I kind of look at those and then I get kind of some ideas and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Well, and the other thing that that's kind of hard to get your head around is like, I could do a shoot with a couple and then I could do another shoot with another couple and they don't know each other, but like, like an hour later or two hours later or the next day. And, uh, and I could do like six in a row and I could literally use all the same poses. And to me, it feels like, Oh my gosh, this again. And it's this, this monotony of those poses. I feel the same way, but to them, they're new poses. Yeah. And And it's not like they're going to post it on Facebook and see their friends with the exact same pose. It's people that, don't necessarily know each other and so yeah you have to keep that in mind too when you're doing that stuff that's my wife will be with me and she's like stop using that pose you use that every single time do something else and i'm like i just i don't know more poses i'm sorry and like i know i'm doing it and i'll like every time i like have someone pose like the certain position there's like one specific position where i'll have their like hand kind of up by their neck and like i i don't know but and it's every time I do that, now I think of my wife telling me, stop doing that, or whatever. I'm like, I'm still going to do it. Like, For sure. Well, and there's some poses that people are going to want to do because it's the popular pose. I mean, yeah. I've had people come to me and say, oh, hey, hey, I saw this pose on on Pinterest uh, that I want to do with my family. And, yeah. you know, and I say, OK, well, let's, you know, let's set that up. And yeah. it doesn't always work because sometimes the pose that they saw on Pinterest was a group of people they're calling a family, but that are absolutely models that were hired to create this, yeah. this photo. And that doesn't always work or, you know, work out the same or look the same yeah. without, without a whole crew of lighting techs and hair and makeup and yeah wardrobe and <laughs> all of those things that that particular photo used to create that. But yeah. Um, and, and I'll act, what I'll actually do is I'll, I'll do all my poses and then at the end of the show, I'm like, hey, if you have like any ideas or certain things that you want to do, like now's the time we can do those. And then if not, let's we can call it a day. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, letting them say, hey, I really want to try this. Uh, yeah. And doing that. And and the nice thing about that is that if it's something that they want to do, they're going to be more excited about it. They're going to have a better, you know, feel about them, a better look on their yeah. face because they're happy doing what they want to do 
and then you end up with better results from it. Yeah. You know, you're getting the more natural them. Yeah. So to speak. What do you, uh, what do you hate most about? Oh, many like things. This. More hates than likes. Um, again, I don't. I'm just not social. I don't love talking to people. And maybe it's Utah, or I don't know. There's just a lot of bossy moms that are very arrogant. It's the same people that are kind of like that think you should be giving your photos away for free and stuff like that. And like, mm. they're just like they're kind of just jerks. Like to be that's the easiest way to put it. And like, I understand you want your photos to be perfect and stuff like that, but it's like trust the photographer or whatever you can give him feedback that's fine but like you don't need to be a jerk about it like and there's right. just especially like when you're like taking pictures and stuff like that too or or one of my biggest pet peeves is when people will be like hey can i look at the pictures on your camera or whatever and it's like in the middle of the shoe or like if you're doing a bunch of pictures or whatever or or something or even if it's like i'll be with like a group of friends and we'll do pictures and be like hey let me like look at it like on your camera or whatever i'm like i'll send them to you i don't know why it bothers me so much but it's like or they're like hey can you send that to me right now i'm like i will edit them and i will send them to you within a week or a week's time or whatever it's like just relax like please like i'm not and finally i've gotten like more frustrated with it so now when people ask me like i'll just be like no like you'll i'll you'll get the photo soon like you'll get them in a few days but yeah well and as far as ornery mom that's everywhere yeah (laughs) it's it's not specific to anyone location the, the um, karens that's the word huh yeah yeah it it definitely exists everywhere uh and something that i think all of you all photographers have to deal with is you know that lady whose husband makes great money and you're just a photographer and um you know here's some beans and rice yeah uh, get out of my face yeah that's <laughs> and, and that that's know, honestly they know best and that, that's the biggest things. thing that's turned me off of doing portraits because i again i don't do a ton now but it's just that's made it like and there's people that are really good with people like that and and so i've kind of told myself well i'm gonna let those people deal with that and i will stick to what i'm really good at and what i enjoy more sure yeah definitely what about you what are what are your some of your dislikes oh boy um I'll, i'll tell you the thing that i absolutely hate the most is when people want me to edit the photos in a way that make them look so unlike themselves that it's just borders on not reality anymore. Oh yeah. And, and I get it all the time and, and I can understand it to a certain extent. Um, you know, everybody's got a little bit of self-esteem, whatever. And, uh, you know, and guys want broader shoulders and girls want, you know, narrower waistlines and, a smaller chin and you know, all of those sort of things, you know, lately I've had a lot of older women that want me to uh, do extensive repair work on their wrinkles and one that can be really difficult to do, but also it's not real. And, and I feel yeah. like, I think that's part a of little me feels bit, like, it's fine. Sure. And, and a little bit of something, you know, there was, there was one family, family portrait that I did and the grandma, the matriarch of, of this family had spent most of her life very heavy, but she had recently like in her late sixties, early seventies, I'm not sure had actually lost a bunch of weight, but she had a lot of excess skin on her arms. Oh yeah. And that's a big thing though. We didn't realize that. And because there's so much to look at, it didn't, it wasn't really even seen until I delivered the photos to her son, who was actually the one that had hired me. And he, he came back to me and said, Hey, look, I didn't notice this before. Is there anything that you can do here? Because it's a point of embarrassment for her. And in that case, in that instance, I said, absolutely. And I fixed it and actually gave her sleeves. (laughs) that's what i did i extended the sleeves that came just down over her shoulders down her arms so do you charge them more for stuff like that and in in this case he was very gracious and said look i'm i'm happy to pay you whatever for it it actually wasn't a terribly difficult fix yeah for me to do and didn't really take a very long time 
but he paid me a significant amount of additional money over the top of of the price yeah. and was and was just a hundred percent grateful for for my work with that and for fixing that for his mom and and it was a great experience most of the time when people want that it's they just figure that's part of the deal yeah that's i i will charge extra if it's any extensive photoshop why well, i wanted to mention really fast before you continued um that's actually probably one of the best parts is when people are really grateful like that does like make me feel really good like i've done shoots where they'll leave like a great review um on this like app where i kind of sometimes get um work through or they'll give me a tip or something like that and like leave a great review and they'll like be super kind and stuff like that and that that's what does make me want to do more things like that is like because it's nice meeting people who are nice and really grateful for the photos and stuff like that too and it's it's usually the more humble people that are just happy to be getting these good photos and stuff like that but then there's definitely again then there's the the moms the karens that you can have the best images in the world and they will find a problem with it or whatever or or not even that they'll just be very bossy on the shoe or whatever yeah well or or unhappy with it you know the nice thing about this particular family that i was uh just speaking of is that he talked so talked me up so great and and that everyone had had such a great experience that his sister and her husband hired me to do not only their individual family photos uh, a year later, but then when their boys completed their Eagle Scout, we did photo shoots for their boys individually. Uh, and then also for one of the boys who uh, I think he played baseball, uh, we did a shoot for him for that, that they were using at the school. And, uh, yeah. and so I ended up being able to get more work from you know that family group which was great because it was a whole family of people that were very gracious and and very kind and really understood the amount of work that can go into what we as photographers do and and i was able to you know charge full price and they didn't bat an eye about it and and then there was additional money that was you know given as a tip to to show their appreciation for for the quality of work and and the good experience that they had yeah in those shoots and yeah you and know, that, and it's great nice. to run into that that line of people that yeah that are great to work with and work for yeah and we don't want to really cover any editing stuff too much because we actually we have like an editing workflow episode where we kind of go into that a little bit so so go check that episode out and you can kind of hear more about the editing side of stuff for sure yeah i probably went on a little bit too long about it well but... i don't think we covered too much of that <laughs> stuff luckily in, in that episode but well any final thoughts god I, I don't know you know if people are your thing and and you are a more social person than oliver and i <laughs> then maybe portraits is your thing and, yeah. and i always think it's good to try out like definitely it's, it's you never I always told myself I would never do portraits or whatever. And then I started doing them and I currently don't do them, but I do, I'll do kind of the lifestyle product stuff where you still need a lot of like the portrait skills and stuff like that. And you're kind of, you're modeling with the product. So it's a little bit different, but all the portrait skills carry over though. And so it's still super helpful. So you never, you For never sure. know what, what you're going to get into. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's absolutely power that comes from learning the portrait genre and, and how to do it. And, and if you don't like it, then fine, but yeah. you still have that skill set for when you need it because yeah, there's it's, definitely going to be crossover. Yeah. And it's just, it's never going to be bad to, to know how to do that stuff. So just another, for sure, another tool to have. And, and if you love doing it, then, make great awesome. money there's wedding photographers that make in the six digits so oh yeah well the the photographer that i referred to runs a multi-million dollar studio yeah exactly so you can make quite a bit of money if you do it and so yeah and and uh, you know and and that's you know all of our referenced weddings which we'll get into in another episode but but even without weddings yeah you can 
you, you can do, do portrait portraits. work and make crazy good money doing it. Yeah. It, just at the beginning, you'll get a lot of, and that's kind of how it probably was for us, is you'll get a lot of low baller things where it's people hiring a photographer that just don't have experience with photography. So they think it's going to be a hundred bucks or, or even cheaper. Sometimes people think it's even cheaper. And so you deal sure. with a lot of that. And I did my fair share of sessions. I, I wasn't making much money on and, oh yeah, um, and I think everyone does. And that's kind of just how you, how you get into portrait photography, but sure. And the trick is to uh, learn the skills necessary to be able to get out of that. Yeah. To where I don't do portraits for a hundred bucks. Yeah. You know, if somebody wants it for a hundred bucks, then there's lots of people out there that'll do it. Yeah, that. and and that, that's what them. I'll do. If people ask me for something that cheap, I'll I'll refer them to someone else who's maybe kind of learning photography or something like that, you know, and that way it gives them experience and it's kind of the price range that they're going after. So. for sure. Okay. We're gonna leave it with that. Thanks everyone for listening and have a great night. All right, we'll see you guys.